Vietnam has some of the most beautiful and exciting roads. It also has some of the craziest roads, the most dangerous roads. But is it worth it for these views, for this skyline, for these beaches, for these hills? Well, with the factory closed for two weeks, it's time to find out. I have two weeks to head north from Ho Chi Minh all the way up to Quy Let's go and enjoy this trip because honestly, I've been planning this for ages and I hope it's the trip of a lifetime. So it's uh, half past six in the morning. You can probably hear my chicken farm. I have, um, China, hello, hello. Yep, got up super early, gonna head off. I've got about a six hour drive of me. And I'm heading to a place called Muine, which is a beach resort for the night. Different crash helmet, it's uh, slightly safer and modular. And uh, yeah, got a long drive seeing rural Vietnam. So I'm going to take you all along with me. This should be epic. I've been looking forward to this since the day I got to Vietnam. So uh, let's head off now. So waypoint one today is the Cat Life Ferry. Um, it's actually a back road out of Saigon. This is a factory turn. So where I am there, that's a, uh, yep. Say hello to everyone who goes on to Tet Holiday tomorrow. But not I today, not I. I am off to the ferry terminal to make sure that I'm actually going to the right bloody place. There's a lot of people going onto the main road. I would try and do that without getting hit by a truck. Oh, and like that line in The Hobbit, this is the furthest I've ever been from the Shire, Mr. Baggins. It is. It's the furthest I've ever been from the Shire. It's not, but this is, the, this is past my normal route. So yeah, so the Cat Life Ferry, here we come. I need to get some money out for the guy. The Cat Life Ferry is a ferry that crosses the Saigon River. It costs very, very little, 4,000 dong to cross, but it really is the demarcation between the city and the start of the countryside. There is a lot of urban sprawl that goes on outside of Ho Chi Minh, and probably for 20 to 30 kilometers after you leave the center of the city, you are still in a sprawling environment. But the demarcation between the Cat Life Ferry and central Saigon is broken once you leave. So, crossing the ferry. Crazy, crazy procedures here. You pay 4,000 dong, you then drive two meters forward or five meters further forward and give the guy the ticket and then let you on. Whether or not they could find a simpler way of doing this is probably not beyond the wit of man. But nonetheless, it's fair to say that Vietnamese bureaucracy is at its finest at this point. So the guy has to get off his candy crush on his phone. I have to give him the ticket that I was given five seconds before, and then I am free to embark upon the ferry. The ferry runs 24 hours a day, and it is used by cars and motorbikes aside. But yes, for me, six o'clock in the morning, just before the heat starts to get into the sky, I am on the Cat Life Ferry, and also before rush hour, because if you leave and try and get anywhere in Saigon, for between about seven o'clock and nine o'clock. It is utter chaos. If you have seen me trying to get to the factory during rush hour, it is an absolute bun fight. So I'm pretty glad that about half past six in the morning, just as the sun comes up, I am on the ferry and all of a sudden able to actually consider this trip started because let's just face facts. You have all seen the inner part of Saigon. Now it's time to show you the countryside. And honestly, there is so much to show you just getting onto this ramp, boarding this ferry is the start of that journey. But after this, I'm gonna show you breakfast because every good journey starts with a good breakfast. Come on, okay. Now I have some time to collect, collect my thoughts, get my shit straight. Oh yeah, your man over there is having his breakfast. And I, well, I'm just gonna enjoy the, uh, enjoy the trip on the ferry. I'll scooch up a little bit. So first cup of the morning, 90 minutes into my trip. That is my trusty stick. I'm just by the side of the road because really, after about two hours, my ass gets tired. And 
in the distance I can see a cloud of smoke. A cloud of smoke normally means cock damp. Barbecue pork chops, rice, pickled vegetables, washed down with cafe sur. Cafe sur da. This is my breakfast. It is the breakfast of the champions for motorbike riders. I've got about six hours to run, but um, I will finish my breakfast and I'll get back to you when I'm on the road. And so with the smoky goodness of Comtam inside me, it is time to navigate the herds of cows that cross the roads, get into single lane traffic, out into the fields, the paddy fields, the fruit fields. It is a glorious, glorious hot day and an absolute joy to be on this motorbike heading towards the coast. The road weaves and winds around sand dunes and into what can only be described as one of the longest, most beautiful stretches of beach I have ever seen. It is truly phenomenal to be here. Here. The only thing that's bugging me a little bit is the intense heat, but a quick stop removing the leather jacket and a quick photo op and I am almost ready to be back on my way. So this is the reason, miles of unspoilt beaches, fishermen in coracles doing their morning fishing. It's just all so very, very idyllic here. And I'm privileged enough to be able to do it on a motorbike. So this is going to be my day from the beach to the mountains. drive up the coast road what becomes apparent is just the amount of abandoned half-finished projects there are miles upon miles and of just resorts brand new resorts resorts that were being built were bought resorts that have just opened and there is literally no one here the entire place is abandoned for want of a better word it's nuts it's as if like everyone got up and went home and left it's I've literally been traveling for 30 minutes on this road. Everything's abandoned. It's, yeah, have a look for yourselves. I mean, look over here. Hundreds of holiday villas, empty. Restaurants on this side, empty, 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 empty. Everything's closed, everything. And it's not just because of Ted. It's, it's like that film 28 days later when people wake up and they, everyone's left. This is kind of how I feel. It kind of, I'm not quite sure. They must have got to just about opening and then everything closed. There is no one here apart from some people doing maintenance. I remember there was a film I used to watch when I was a kid set in space where some guy was just whizzing around with uh, a couple of little robots on some spaceship and he had no one for company. This is kind of what it feels like here. There's, there's no one here. Insane, insane. But two hours to go. Two hours of beautiful winding coast road to play with. Nice. to bring you 60 seconds of blatant advertising from our sponsor Surfshark. Now, we've never done a sponsored video because we've never believed in the products, but actually this is something that we've used for years. And a VPN is something that is super, super important to us, a virtual private network. Now in the countries that allow these, what that gives us is a couple of things. Number one, internet security. When we are doing banking, when we are uploading videos from fairly sketchy cafes, all around Vietnam, all around Thailand, all around Asia, all around Europe, we need internet security, and this gives us a level of security to protect our data. That's the first thing. Second thing is, over this trip, I have done a lot of hotel bookings. What you may or may not know is that flights, accommodation, booking sites, check your geographic location and change the price accordingly. So if you change your location, you invariably get cheaper flights, cheaper accommodation. Trust me, try this out yourself. Number three, media content. When I am not doing this, when I am not zipping around and I'm in a hotel, I tend to look at my local news, which is the BBC News, and I tend to watch Netflix UK. That means that the content is locked to the UK. So if I want to watch Downton Abbey and not some amazing Kung Fu movies based in China, which are amazing, but actually after a while we get a little bit mundane, 
then I need to use a VPN. So the VPN that we use is Surfshark. If you are interested in that sort of thing, there is a coupon down below, and that coupon gives you a few things. It gives you an 83% discount. It gives you three months extra if you use our code, and it gives you a full 30-day money-back guarantee. So if that is of interest to you, click the link down below, and I will see you all soon. Now back to biking. And for those of you who have all been asking about the bike, it is a Yamaha XSR. This is the Indonesian import and made for the Asian market. So a whopping 155cc. And so after four to five hours on the road, we approach Muine. Now, there's not a lot to say about Muine, and I have said that I'm not interested in what I am going to see in the towns. This is just for the journey in between. But for those of you who want to know about Muine, well, it's dead to the world. And it's full of Russians. It is almost 100% Russian. Russian restaurants, Russian tourists. There are very few Vietnamese there. So if you are interested in a place that is dead and full of Russians, well, try Muine. If you're interested in a place that's full of dead Russians, well, try Crimea. Boom, boom. So day two of my trip dawns bright and early, another 6 a.m. start, but it clearly is becoming apparent that today is going to be a very, very hot day. So time to stop and take some precautions. So I didn't learn my lesson yesterday, despite the fact that I did this the last time I went on a motorbike trip and had my arms exposed, I burnt myself. So, whoosh. Arm protection. Imperative if you are driving around here and at 7.30 in the morning it is crazy hot. It is going to be a crazy hot day today. And in this case, best thing I can do is make sure I've got good arm protection. So there we are. And finally, after an hour on the road and a couple more cows we hit the mountain trails the climb is steep and bendy it is everything you could wish to want from a motorbike climb it is a little bit fraught and you do have to be super wary of potholes oncoming coaches coaches coming up behind you but honestly for any of you who ride bikes this is an absolute joy of a trail i was literally grinning from ear to ear when i wasn't scared for my own life something i all believe if you ever come to vietnam and you want to take a tour this is what you should be doing it is so much fun and beautiful to see the scenery is absolutely stunning and then when you get to the top of the hill there's a coffee shop where someone will greet you give you ice cold drinks look after your sore aching limbs before you head back on the road what more could you want from life And with coffee out the way and back on the bike, it is just one more hill climb, one more kilometer until we hit the peak. And getting off the bike and looking at this view is worth all the hardship, all the arse ache and all the danger. Take a look yourselves. What can I say? The view from up here is spectacular. Completely, completely amazing. Beautiful, spectacular. Lots of words. Yeah. But a cautionary tale for all those wannabe easy riders who want to zip down these mountains at speed. There is a price to pay and that price can be very, very heavy. These roads are poorly maintained and there are no warnings as to where the potholes are and when they are. They just happen to pop up in front of you and if you're lucky, you can avoid them. Uh, two hours out of the lap, 
and uh, this road is dangerous as hell. Like literally, there's like such incredibly deep potholes that you just don't see them until they're on top of you. So a couple of times I've been like, shit, like potholes, slam the brakes on and yeah. So I need to be very, very careful uh, driving this next couple of miles because it looks like really good tarmac. It's not like the Australian roads, which are generally like the entire distance. But this is like, yeah, look, another one, bang. So yeah, every now and then you just get this. So your front wheel dips in and then you're like, okay. But as always with this part of the world, it is incredibly beautiful. And as for scenery, the highlands of Vietnam are famous for coffee and tea plantations, and they are all over the mountains throughout the countryside. They are truly stunning. And when you are not looking at coffee plantations, there are lakes, there is natural beauty. There is just so much to see in the run up to getting into Dalat. And obviously, as you leave Dalat on the mountain road down. As for Dalat itself, well, Dalat is built around a lake and is renowned in Vietnam as the place that young Vietnamese Vietnamese couples go to enjoy what can only be described as a romantic Vietnamese break. So if parading round in candy colored coaches is your thing, then the Lat may be the place for you. I, however, was unimpressed, but that's just me. I want to see the countryside. And so in next week's episode, we'll be taking the trip down the mountain to the Lat, looking at some amazing scenery and unfortunately some horrific problems that occur when people don't pay attention to the roads and drive dangerously. But that's all in next week's episode. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. And if you look forward to seeing Nha Chang, Queen Yong in all its beauty, I will see you all in the next episode, traveling around Vietnam on a motorbike. Take care.